What is up, heroes? This is Midnight Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play 999 Blind. In the last episode, we had uh, we had quite the moment. Junpei really forced his hand on everyone else and got his way going into this room, and June cracked a little bit at the sight of Snake. Well, we think Snake at the moment, at least. Um, dead body, and now we have a puzzle to solve, an area to escape from. It's been actually a couple weeks since I've played the game last. Just by nature of my schedule, IRL stuff, um, free recording is an absolute necessity at the moment, so thanks for patience and understanding, and um, thank you for your patience in the comments, as it may seem like I just simply haven't been reading them, because I haven't, you know, addressed them or changed anything uh, since reading them over the past few episodes, but really, I mean, they were recorded before I was actually able to read them, so thank you to those who did offer tips and such over the past few episodes. They are acknowledged, I promise. Alright, so... With all that out of the way, let's hop into this this puzzle. Let's start taking a look at the showers. All right, let's see if anything happens when I turn you. Nope, nothing. Not even a drop. Is the pipe clogged? Of course, they they would suggest that. Um, what about over here? So we got L L R. Those letters written in blood. Hmm. <laughs> what was it again? It was like one one zero three seven. <laughs> LLR. Do you think that might be some sort of dying message from Snake? No, that's impossible. You saw the body. You aren't doing anything after someone like something like that happens to you. Then this... The way the blood's dry tells you it's real old. Whoever's blood this is, it ain't Snake's. Then you're saying this blood was put here a long time ago? Yeah. Interesting. So if this death were potentially set up or something like that, the blood was placed well before Snake's body was actually here. Interesting. So, oh, so we can turn off the lights. Huh. I feel like I'm gonna get some... Uh, what's it called? Like, a, like an ultraviolet light or something like that? That will reveal a few letters to the right of the R. Regardless, it looks like that's all I can really take a look at over here. Let's see what we got going on up here. Toilet paper! And it looks like it's got some letters or something written on it. I'm obviously going to have to unroll it at some point or something like that. Or stack it in a very particular way. It's a toilet paper with some kind of red symbols on it. You think maybe that's a Psytale Cypher? What? Psytale Cypher? What the heck is that? You wrap a piece of paper around a stick and then write several sentences on it so that the whole paper is filled up. Then you unwrap the paper, and you can't tell what the original message was, right? That's how it works, more or less. Then to decipher it, you gotta have a stick that's the same diameter as the original one. Same diameter as the original one, huh? Yeah. Then you just wrap the paper around that stick, and you can read the code. Interesting. Is that, like, the diameter of the toilet paper roll, or... Hmm. I'm not 100% sure what they what they mean by the wrapping around the diameter. Is it like the entirety of the paper roll, toilet paper roll, is wrapped around this this stick and then something is written? Or is it just however much fits around the diameter of what you're trying to wrap it around and then the rest of it is you know, rolled back onto the paper? It's probably the latter. That seems a little bit more reasonable, but... A stack of toilet paper. Cool. What do we have over here? A wooden box. There's something in here. Luminol. Okay. Um, I can't say I've ever heard of Luminol, actually. It's probably some sort of cleaning solution, given its location in the bathroom. Can we open it up or anything? What the heck is this thing? Some kind of spray bottle? There's something written on it. Lumen can't read anything else. The label's all faded. Let me see that. He just grabbed it from him. That wasn't very nice. Oh, this is Luminol. You know, forensics guys use it at crime scenes. Oh yeah, that stuff that glows blue when you spray it on blood. Gotcha. Even if the blood's been wiped off, it'll still glow. Okay, so there's... Remember before when I was like, oh, I'm sure there are going to be letters to the left. Alright, so we'll come back there in a moment, but we're going to spray this on. Wait, you don't really think we're supposed to use the luminol here, do you? Yeah, it does seem kind of weird to use it here, but maybe I should try it just in case. Yep. There we go. L-R-L. So L-L-R-L-R-L. I wonder why there's like a period after- oh, no, there are periods after these ones too. I'd imagine it's like left, left, right, left, right, left. But that's not too surprised with how that turned out. This light bulb provides light for this room, okay? Oh, we can open all these up. 
what do we got going on here? In the bucket? A bucket, okay. I would consider maybe wrapping the toilet paper around this. Let's see if we can combine the two. Nope, all right. Can we search the bucket? It's a tin bucket. Hey, Junpei-kun, do you remember back in elementary school when you spilled all of our paint across the whole classroom? They made you clean it up, and all they gave you was a sponge and a bucket. Like this. Dang, that's rough. Hey, come on now, can't we just leave the past in the past? In elementary school? That's rough. Junpei reached for the broom, and as he grabbed it, he heard a soft voice from behind him. It was June. The rabbit hutch. Huh? Huh? <laughs> he turned around. June still looked sadly pale, but there was a smile on her face. Oh. You just reminded me of it. The rabbit hutch, I mean. How did I remind you of something like that? Junpei-kun and the broom. You were always playing around with the broom in front of the rabbit hutch. I was? <laughs> Don't you remember? Junpei stared at the broom in his hand. Yikes! <laughs> You mean, you don't remember that summer either? Or June is like, that summer that we spent so much time together and bonded so deeply. She looked very sad. He shook his head. Yeah. Of course. Of course I remember. How could I forget something like that? It was terrible. Huh? Let's, let's hear about this summer, Junpei. They were in the sixth grade. Junpei and Jun had been assigned to take care of the classroom pets, the rabbits. Their chief duty was to clean the hutches every morning. On the final day of school before summer vacation began, Junpei overslept. He rushed to school and found Jun standing in front of the rabbit hutches. No sooner had Junpei arrived than Jun began to cry. Oh, we got a little, little Jun there. He had no idea why until he looked behind her into the rabbit hutch. Animal had gotten to him. The first thing he saw was blood. The hutch was filled with the dead bodies of the rabbits. Yikes. Even after their teachers and friends came to see what the commotion was, June couldn't stop crying. I just kept crying and crying until you came over. You held my hand and you looked very serious. And you said, Don't cry. I'm going to catch the person who did this. Of course, good old Junpei-ku and the hero, even in elementary school, gonna catch the bad guy. After you told me that, I finally stopped crying. Well, the real fun started after you quit crying. <laughs> you told me we're gonna catch the killer together. <laughs> June smiled, and a little of the flush of life returned to her. To her cheeks. Then we decided that we'd ambush them. Yeah, I remember. The school also kept roosters and guinea pigs. Junpei and Jun had decided the murderer would likely return to finish off the rest of the animals. They would ambush the killer at night. <clears throat> Junpei and Jun hid behind the hutch at dusk and waited. Aw, poor little Jun. It was a warm summer night. The quiet sound of crickets whispered through the air. As the sun went down, the stars began to wink at them from the sky. And June's Akane Kurashiki's face. That night was something Junpei knew he would never forget, as long as he lived. But the, but the murderer never showed up. Yikes. We waited for them all summer vacation, and they never showed up. Yeah, but the animals didn't get attacked either. I think all that work amounted to something, you know? He'd felt the same way, but it was good to hear her say it. <laughs> Although, you know, if you think about it, we were probably taking on a lot more than we could handle, absolutely. What do you mean? 
She looks up at him, confused. <clears throat> oh, come on, we, we were just kids. <laughs> Wait, what? If who'd ever killed the rabbits actually showed up, they probably would have had a knife or something. I mean, you must have been pretty worried, right? I I wasn't worried. <laughs> because you were there, Chupekun! <laughs> because you were... <laughs> because you... Because you were there with me. How did I know? Oh, the blush. Ship, ship, ship. She blushed furiously. You know, no one else wanted to take care of the animals. Clearly embarrassed, she tried desperately to change the subject. I was the only one who asked to do it at first. Yeah, boys don't really want to bother with taking care of animals, you know. Huh? Is that is that just like a stereotype I'm unaware of? Well, yeah. But you asked to do it after I did, didn't you? Who called out? <laughs> if it wasn't the rabbits, they were gonna make me do something else. You know how that school was. <laughs> I figured it'd be better if I was working with somebody who wasn't too much of a loudmouth, right? Somebody who wasn't gonna tell on me if I felt like blowing it off. Huh? Really? That's why you volunteered? Nah. It's totally because you like June, right? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Ugh. Don't be hurting her feelings. He nodded quickly and much too earnestly and then quickly looked away at something very important. Really? Of course. That hadn't been the reason, of course. Okay, good. He had asked to take care of the rabbits so that he could be near June. But it had been so long ago, he couldn't bring himself to tell her how he'd felt back then. It would be embarrassing. I wonder if June believes him. He took a quick breath to clear his head, tossed the broom up, and then snatched it out of the air. Well, we don't really have time to be walking down memory lane like this, you know? We've got to figure out a way, or got to figure out a way out of this room. Otherwise, yes. I'm going to look over there. June nodded curtly, then turned and walked away. I should get back to it myself. Ah! What did you step on? That's right, the pool of blood. Junpei turned around and looked at the room, at Snake's body. Chunks of flesh and organs still lay on the floor. Going on and on about old times right next to a corpse. What were we doing? Yeah. <clears throat> well, maybe it was because we're in this mess. Despite such a situation, or perhaps because of it, the mind turned to the farthest thing from death that it could find. Interestingly, <clears throat> now that I see I see farthest used here, there's actually a difference between furthest and farthest. Farthest is used for something that is in a measurable distance, right? So, for example, right now my computer in front of me is farther than the or is not as far. The the bathroom, I guess, is farther than the computer right in front of me. But if I said I wanted to go, go along further in education, that would be a more qualitative, not measurable distance away. So, in this case, it would actually make more sense to use furthest, and it's not relevant to 999 at all, but it's <laughs> what came to my grammar nerd mind uh, self. Maybe, maybe there's some qualifications, some details I'm not going into right now that somebody will correct me on, but that's, I guess, a good rule of thumb to go by. I have no idea why that came to mind. Um, still, Jupe couldn't help but feel a twinge of guilt at wanting so desperately to live one snake lie dead before him. I have to survive, no matter the cost. I need to make sure she gets out too. As he stared at the clumps of blackened flesh, all Junbei could think of was how much he wanted to live. Okay, um, so we have obtained the broom. Another thing I always mix up is lie and lay. It's very... Hmm, what are you doing with that broom? 
Can we combine this with the uh, toilet paper? Is this what we're gonna be wrapping it around? Hmm. What if I wrap the toilet paper around the broom? Okay, there we go. Can we take a look at it? Oh, so you wrap the toilet paper around the broom, huh? Looks like the symbols line up perfectly. It says 634 plus. 634 plus. Um. Well, I'm not really sure exactly <laughs> what that means at the moment. However, I'd imagine we're going to find something else that will help make more sense of it. What do you think this is? It looks like tar. Really? It's kind of sticky. I don't think we can just wipe it off. I doubt just pouring some water on it's going to help much either. What about hot water? Okay, that's a fair suggestion. Hot water? It's some really hot water, like boiling hot, then maybe that would wash it off. Alright, I guess that's the, uh, it's probably going to be the other half of the code. Can we see what's in here? It's a water tank for a toilet. I've seen a lot of OC guys try and hide a piece of something like this. Usually for a 187 or something. Huh? I have no idea what that means. I guess they think it's clever. Don't know when they'll figure out everybody else thinks it's clever too. Huh? I mean, I know peace, but what's OC? Organized crime? What's a 187 though? What is that, some kind of police slang? Huh? Uh, probably. Huh? What'd I say? Why does he look all sad now? That's not really important right now, guys. Well, let's just check it out, alright? Interesting. So why would Seven know some sort of, like, police slang? Is he a cop? Does he just watch a lot of police criminal activity shows or something like that? Well, he's not wasting any time. Looks like there's a screwdriver. Alright. So we'll inevitably use that to open up something else. Anything else? The toilet tank? There's nothing in it. Which means we can't flush it. Kinda hard to flush a toilet without water. Fair point. Um, there's some toilet paper on this shelf. Can we grab it? No? Okay. Then we'll head on to the next stall. Anything in here? There's nothing in the toilet. If there was, that would be gross. There might be something in the tank, you know. Let's open that up. And what do we have here? Red key card. Fair enough. Anything else? Tank where the red card was. Nothing here now. Alright. There's no toilet paper. A skinny shelf. And we'll head on to the next stall, I guess. Uh, I already checked all three toilets, you know? Nothing unusual there. Alright, then we'll head over here. It's a thermometer. Can you get it off? No. No, it's screwed onto the wall. Gotcha. I don't know why we're gonna take the thermometer off. All I can think of is we're gonna turn on, like, the hot water in the shower and then put the thermometer in the bucket to make sure that we're getting water hot enough to pour it in the toilet to, like, rinse off the tar. But I'd imagine, oh, I guess maybe with where it is, I figured it was just being measured somewhere else and then displaying the temperature here, but that's maybe a more modern thing. Um, on this ship, it would have temperature or, you know, technology old enough that the thermometer, you're, the display you're seeing is actually what's directly measuring probably the room temperature. So if we want to make sure it's measuring the, uh, what's it called, the water of whatever's in the bucket, we'll want to take it off the wall so we can use it. Hey, Junpei. You know why thermometers only go up to 170 degrees Fahrenheit? Is this the right one? This is the one we want, yeah. Somebody mentioned in one of the comments that I can change the default, and that's why it keeps resetting every single time. Let me let me see if I can do that, actually, from here. File... no. It's probably got to be from, like, the main menu area. Maybe not in-game. Yeah, that's a little annoying, but... Alright, well, I mean, it's it's good enough regardless. So, Santa, why do thermometers only go up to 107 degrees Fahrenheit? Junpei answered without taking his eyes off the screw. Something to do with that's when, I don't know, Mercury does something. No, can't say I ever thought about that. At 107 degrees, the cells in the human body start to die and the organs begin to shut down. The proteins in your cells start to harden. It's fairly accurate. At about a fever of 107, you would actually start to die. 104, 105, those are dangerously high and urgent, but at like 106, 107, you will, you will die really quickly. I can't, I don't know what to say about the proteins in cells starting to harden. They definitely unfold and, you know, are misshapen and, you know, non-functional, which is why you die, but... 
It's like when you hard boil an egg. Even if you cool it down afterwards, it won't go back to being a raw egg. In other words, it's dead. That's why thermometers don't go past 107. There's no point. Why did Santa brought that up? Junpei wondered. Oh yeah? He continued to work at the screw. But it's pretty rare for a fever to get that high. Even viruses and stuff don't usually drive the body temperature up to 107. Yeah, and that makes a lot of sense because unless something is so um, like pathological that it's actually changing the temperature set point in the brain, the fever is actually a defense mechanism by the body. Um, it's, it's funny how there's actually uh, kind of an obsession with getting rid of a fever, but the fever is actually a good defense response to whatever your, your body is potentially fighting. A lot of times your immune cells, your, your neutrophils, your white blood cells, all, all that stuff, are actually more effective at higher temperatures, which is part of why you have a fever when they're most active. It's, it's a good response. So a lot of times actually getting rid of a fever without getting rid of the cause of that fever can actually be harmful. And that's why a lot of times in hospitals, fevers are monitored as they're good indicators of what's going on in the body. They actually help the body um, respond to whatever is going on inside it. And unless they get to a certain high degree, they're not actually harmful. Fun little fact, I guess. There's also not a lot of literature that supports that getting rid of a fever actually even makes people that much more comfortable, surprisingly. Okay, <laughs> now aside from that, of course, there are other external things that could. Like what? Well, let's see. Something like getting locked in a sauna. Or getting thrown into an incinerator and burnt to death. Hold up, this isn't corpse party we're talking about here, Santa. <laughs> yeah, I guess that would get a little hotter than 107 degrees Fahrenheit. Junpei gave a short, barking laugh. A moment later, the screw fell off. With a small tug, Junpei pulled the thermometer from the wall. Alright, I got it. He looked up and saw Santa glaring at a blank section of the wall. <coughs> huh? What's up? Nothing. Forget about it. I wonder if Santa, like in his previous experience with the Nonary games, ha had something like that happen. Santa spun around and walked off, away from Junpei. What was all that about? But as Junpei watched him go, he didn't look angry. He looked very, very sad. Yeah, he probably knew someone that had that happen to them. Alright, so I'll search it for the sake of searching, but... Oh, you took the thermometer off. It says open at the bottom of the gauge. I wonder what it means. Maybe when it gets that hot, something will open? Really? But we're talking like... Over 75 degrees Celsius? That's, uh... That's really hot. <laughs> that's really hot. For, re for reference, a fever in, in a human is about 38 degrees Celsius. Celsius. So, yeah, we're talking really... Oh, he already said he checked in. Why don't you... What, you don't trust me? My, my bad, Santa. So we've got four things here. So that's why it was like, I think it was like 634 plus, which means there's one number we don't quite have. There are two sets of locks. We probably need the red key card and the blue key card and the passcode. Dang, there's a lot going on here. All right. Um, so the other thing I want to take a look at was the drain. There we go. Huh? It looks like there's something down there on the grate. I think it's a card. Yeah, it's the blue card. Can't reach it, though. It's too deep. Too... What? Can't stick your arm down there? Um, can we use the broom? A drain. There's a blue card in it. Where's that, like, um, <laughs> the picker-upper thing from, like, the 90s that has the little red claws at the end that they had the TV infomercials for? Oh, man. Alright, is this where we're gonna find the pipe that's clogged? Yes, it is, and it looks like we're gonna have a minigame, too. This piece of paper tied to this pipe with a wire. Notice, drainage valve operation. Please do not flush the water in these pipes. Doing so may cause the drain to overflow. Okay, so the whole point is to flush the pipes. So it looks like this maybe opens them? Maybe? I don't know. Can we take a look back at the drain and see how it goes? 
No? Okay. Um, can we try and turn on the water here? There's water. There's water coming out of the shower head. Let's see if... Crap, that's hot. Really hot. Man, that water must be just about boiling. Well, we can grab the bucket. Maybe I can use the shower here to fill the bucket with hot water. Hey, Seven, could you turn on the shower? I'm gonna put the bucket under the head. Ah, okay, sure thing. Bucket filled with hot water. Cool. Let's uh, combine it with the thermometer to make sure it's boiling or whatever. No? Alright, then I guess. Um, I wonder if they want us to put it in the toilet first and then check the thermometer. There's something that looks like tar inside the bowl. If I flush that water from the bucket, that should clean it up. Oh, they don't want us to pour it directly in the toilet bowl. They want us to put it in here. Alright, so I just pour the hot water in this tank and... Looks like you filled it. Now you should be able to flush it, right? There's probably a handle somewhere on the tank that you can pull. You think so? Serious? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Um, well, there should be one, right? Some pipes. They're connected to the tank on the toilet. Is there really not a handle? Alright, let's flush the hot water. Well, there it goes. Just like a toilet should work. 185 equals. Huh. Um, that stuff's washed off. <coughs> Looks like that writing was numbers. See it? 185 equals? What is this? You got me. It just looks like numbers. I wonder, what was the, um... Nah, I didn't want to combine. What was the number again? 634 and 185. That should be what? 819? Yeah, I think so. Cool. Um... So we gotta do something about the... The drain. Right? I'm trying to figure out how this works. Are the, are we connecting something or are we just changing like the position? Right? So there are only three positions here. Is the idea that they should all be... That's how they already were, right? They started off this way. Right? Hmm. I don't have much of an indicator as to when, you know, the water is freely working or not. Outside of just, you know, going back and being like, huh, I wonder if the drain works now. Nope. Um. Could I? No, they're not going to let me fill up the bucket of water again. That would be too easy. Also wouldn't make a lot of sense, you'd have to have a lot of buckets of water to cause the drain to straight up, you know, back up. Oh! <laughs> Silly. It was what, LLR, LRL? So let's see here. So left, left, right, left, right, left. There we go. Well, I did what it said on the wall. I wonder if it actually did anything. Hey, this drain's acting up. What the heck did you do? I just messed with the valves a little. Nothing big. Alright, cool, so we got that down. Let's open this up, there must be water flowing through the pipe on the right. There's water pouring out of the drain. And we got ourselves the card. Cool. So with that, I think we're good to go. Lock, huh? There's a blue light next to it, but it's off. Okay, looks like the red light is off, and it still says lock. So we'll swipe the blue card, we'll swipe the red card. Okay. The blue light was just on, but it's off now, and the red light's on instead. I guess we have to swipe the red card first, and then the blue card. Okay, I don't know why that's the case, but that's alright, I guess. Great job, Junpei Kun! Both of the lights are on now. Now you just need to put in the password. The password is four digits. I guess the password is four digits long. Wait, it was what? 634 plus... 185? Right? 634 634 plus 185 yeah there's no way that's four digits hmm yeah I mean that's definitely 819 we probably have to open this up 
because there's no way it's going to be like... Both lights are on, we should be able to enter the password now. What's with these E and C keys? E means enter and C means clear, I think. So after you put in the password, hit E. If you screw it up, hit C. I mean, I could obviously try and do 819, but it's not going to work. Yeah. Alright, well that's good to know, I guess. Um, yeah, we haven't done anything with the thermometer yet. There's water flowing out of the drain where we found the key card. Can I, like, use the clock on the shower? Yeah, if I can get this hot water on the thermometer, then maybe. Why did I call it a clock? All right, thermometer, let's get this party started. <laughs> Junpei talking to the thermometer. Open it up, and then we'll get maybe the last digit or something. Yep, looks like that's doing the trick. There goes the gauge. And now it's at the open mark. Or we're going to get another three-digit number. Hmm? Huh? It, it opened. What's this? Looks like there's a piece of paper in here. 957. Oh, man. Um... So, 1,819 minus 43, right? So, 1,800 minus 24, so 1,776, I think? Let's try that, and if it comes down to it, if it's not that, I'll, I'll use the calculator just for the sake of time, but... Woo! There we go. And with that, we should be free to go. You found it. That we did. That was a pretty cool puzzle. I, I think it's just because of all the numbers. <laughs> Outside of the shower room was a hallway that extended off to the left and right. There's a large iron door at the end. Let's take a look. They'd moved a few steps toward the door when Jubei heard the sound of metal on metal. Huh? Huh? They turned around. Seven was doing something to the door of the shower room. What are you doing, Seven? Did he... Did he do that the last time we were in a room with Seven? I think so, in like a different timeline. Well, I figure maybe we might want to come back here sometime, yeah. So I stuck the broom in there to keep the door from shutting. Alright, let's go. Interesting. With that, he stood up and began walking down the hallway. He brushed past Junpei and kept going. Somebody mentioned something um, in one of their comments that was pretty cool. It's that it seems like in every single timeline, certain characters are different, or different characters are suspicious. So like my very first playthrough, I was super suspicious of Lotus, but in the like previous one, I was really suspicious of Lotus. And then in the one prior to that, or you know after that, or I don't, I don't know which one, but there was another one where like Clover was particularly suspicious, and and so forth. And so I think part of it is that everybody has some element of suspicion to them. It's just a matter of finding, doing the right events that elicit it. After a moment, the rest of them followed him. Before long, they found themselves at the large iron door. They'd only been there for a moment when Jun spoke up. Junpei-kun, look. He turned. There, on the right side of the hallway, was a piece of paper attached to the wall. <coughs> What's up? What's that on the wall there? Oh, I think it's it's a map, right? Junpei ran over and peeled it off. It's a map of the ship's interior. So I'll, I bet, we're, I think we're at the uh, stuff we've already done. Have we? No, I guess not. This looks pretty different to me. <laughs> so I guess, I guess we'll keep going with it. I mean, we've obviously had this exact interaction before, but the novel segment is probably different. It's a map of the ship's interior. It says sea deck. So it's the map for this floor, then. We'll have time to study it later. Let's keep going for now. Junpei folded the map and stuffed it into his pocket. Back at the door, the four of them lined up in front of it. Santa stepped forward. He grabbed hold of the door and then turned to look back at the rest of them. Ready? I'm gonna open it. They nodded. Santa nodded back and threw the door open. I forget where it goes. Is it just back to them? Or back to the hospital room? All four of them left through. What the? Oi, oi, maji ka no. You're kidding me. It took only a moment for them to realize where they were. We're back. They had been there only a short time ago. Yep, exactly. 
and Clover and Lotus are not going to be the happiest campers. <laughs> it was a large hospital room filled with countless beds. Lotus and Clover looked up as they entered. Ace was there as well, although he looked as though he had only just woken up. Clover, Lotus, and Ace, I'm glad you're all okay. Uh, Lotus, what are you? Slap! I can see it coming now. The moment they spotted Junpei, Lotus and Clover headed straight for him. As she neared him, Lotus drew back her hand. Yep. <laughs> didn't take didn't take much foresight to see that one coming. And slapped him open palmed across the face. How could you do this to us? Her face was furious. <laughs> she grabbed Junpei by the collar and shook him violently. Clover didn't touch him, but the hate in her eyes was no less potent. It was Seven who stopped them. Knock it off, we've got bigger stuff to worry about right now. His deep voice echoed across the massive room. Lotus glared at Seven, but let Junpei go after one last vicious shake. What? Go have a look. Um... I stuck the screwdriver in the door. Oh... That door over there, the one without a number. So long as the screwdriver's in there, it can't shut, so you can get in there. Now it's actually, uh, important, right? That he keeps jamming each door along the way. There's a shower room pest there. I stuck a broom at the door there too. Anyway, go take a look. No, no preface, no warning. Then you're saying we can go in there without passing through the numbered door? Yep, that's about the size of it. What the heck is in there? You'll know when you see it. Um. Fine. Let's go. Interesting. Part of what's interesting about this is Clover is going to see the body, right? In the first timeline we did, Clover didn't actually get the chance to see the body, and that's why the revelation later, based on Junpei's description, was so revealing. In the one where, you know, Clover cracks, probably my favorite ending so far, um, she never had any more detail about the body and thinks truly that Snake is dead. I wonder how she's going to react in this one. Lotus and Glover looked at one another for a moment, then nodded and stepped through the door. By then, Ace had made his way to them, moving with the stiff, shuffling steps of someone who has only just awoken from a lengthy slumber. All too familiar with that. <laughs> My goodness. I know I said I was sure you'd come back for me. <laughs> I didn't think it would happen so soon, though. He shook his head weakly. Should I go as well? Yeah. Seven nodded. Very well. Ace followed Lotus and Clover with his stiff, tired gait. Are we waiting for a scream? I think that's what we're waiting for. The squeal of tortured metal made Junpei's teeth curl. It sounded like the noise a ghost would make. No matter how many times he heard it, he never got used to it. 999, I told you this isn't corpse party. <laughs> Every time, they put him on edge. It didn't help that there was a girl nearby who looked far more like a ghost than a living human should. It was Clover. She sat on the edge of the bed, her head drooping listlessly onto her chest. Her eyes were blank and stared across the room at nothing. Her breathing was slow and mechanical. Aside from the rise and fall of her chest, she didn't move. Junpei felt as if even a nudge might cause her to shatter into a thousand pieces. Poor thing. Snake was probably murdered. Chances are he was killed the same way the ninth man was. Seven lowered his head, likely in an effort to keep Clover from hearing what he had to say. There were four other people in the room with Junpei and Seven. Ace, Santa, June, and Lotus. Seven looked at each one of them in turn and continued. It's pretty straightforward. Not that hard to figure out how they did it. First, the killers got Snake to authenticate on the red to open door three. Then they shoved him into it, alone. 
And waited nine seconds for the door to shut. Once that door shut, it was all over Snake, but he didn't give up. I wonder if this is the same description as before. He probably knew it wouldn't do him any good, but he probably ran into the shower room looking for the dead. It was a small chance, but it wasn't like he had anything to lose. Unfortunately, it didn't work. The detonator is only deactivated if everybody who authenticated when they went in uses the dead. Snake was the only one who went through the door. And then, 81 seconds after he was shoved in, that happened. But we think more so than ever that this is a stage death, right? That's probably not Snake's body based on Clover's description. That's probably not his blood based on the description of the blood from when we were solving the room. So the question is, where is Snake? And whose body is that? I see. So that's what you meant by killers, huh? You need at least three people to open one of the number doors. Including Snake. It wouldn't open for Snake and a single killer. Yeah. That means we're looking at multiple perps here. Jinpei crossed his arms and grunted. Well, just in case, I want to make sure. Let's say you're right. When do you think Snake was killed? When we all split up to look for the parts for the Reds, I think. Right after that was when we noticed he was gone. Then that means none of us have alibis. We were all off searching the rooms we'd been assigned, looking for those parts. Yeah. That means anybody could be a killer. Wait a minute, what are you talking about? I'm sorry, June, but you're gonna have to find out in the next episode. <laughs> Why do you bring the cliffhangers even to the characters in the games? Yeah, this this episode's been going on for a little bit longer than I would have liked. I was, I'm impressed with how drawn into the game I was, so... I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I hope you enjoyed the uh, the shower room escape. It was it was pretty cool. It wasn't too tedious in my opinion, and it had some numbers, which is always a cool thing. Some interesting concepts. Yeah, it was neat. We got to reminisce a little bit about the summer. You know, the ship, ship, ship with June and Junpei, and we're talking more more about you know Snake's murder. I should put really Snake in quotes there, and so there's nothing too new in that regard, but there's plenty more to come. So I'm excited for it, and I hope you guys are too. But until the next episode. This is Moon Knight Zero, and this mission is complete.